A while back, OpenAI released an application that was a simple hit option space, and you can automatically talk to OpenAI right then and there. It's this window that just pops up, and it's universally accessible. It's going to be on top of full screen applications, and you can even click and drag it to move it around. Now, I was specifically curious how they did this floating panel. So let's get into it. Now we are effectively starting from scratch here. We just have the content view and the tutorial app. Now, first and foremost, this is gonna be specific to Mac OS. So let's delete anything else uh, regarding iPhone, Vision OS, so on and so forth. And then going back to our tutorial app, we don't want it to automatically go to the content view. Uh, you can if you want to have like a separate view altogether. However, for in our case, we're just gonna make it so we say settings and then we're gonna be showing an empty view. And then we're gonna program an app delegate that will actually allow us to hit a hotkey and show that content view. So first off, to create our app delegate, we're gonna say new file, app delegate.swift. We're gonna say class, app delegate, colon. This is gonna be of the type of an NS object and an NS application delegate. Then we're gonna say application did finish launching. Then we're gonna say NS app dot set activation policy to accessory and if you want to look into this it's basically saying that the app doesn't appear in the dock and it doesn't have a menu bar if you want to have it you know an app that appears in the menu bar and everything as well uh, that's up to you but we're going to be using accessory next up i just want to show the content window so i'm going to say funk show content window and then from here we're going to go ahead and create a new file this is going to be my, called my content panel actually so maybe I should rename the function there to be show content panel. And then our content panel, we're gonna say class content panel colon NS panel. Now we're gonna have to import app kit so that we get that. And then we're gonna go ahead and create an initializer. So I'm gonna say init, this is going to be super dot init with the content rect uh, style mask backing and defer. With the content rect here, we're gonna set this to zero. The style mask here will be both borderless, dot non-activating panel, and dot titled. And what dot titled will allow us to do is actually move it around. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. For backing here, we're gonna say dot buffered, and defer, we're gonna say true. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set up the window. So the windows here is gonna be background clear, is opaque will be equal to false, has a shadow is set to false, level equals floating so level here is where is this window or this panel going to be shown it is going to be above everything else so that is what floating is defining here if you wanted to look at all of the options you can see that we have normal sub menu torn off menu main menu status bar so on and so forth uh, and they all have different depth levels and so floating is above everything is movable by window background set that to true so that we can move it around title bar appears transparent so normally as a window you would have like your title bar uh, you're just going to delete that essentially and hide it but still having the ability to move it around like a normal window and then finally collection behavior this is just going to be conjoin all spaces and is stationary and so this is meaning as i move from window to window if i move from a full screen app to another full screen app or from my window to a full screen app it's going to stay on top of the display at all times next up we're going to go ahead and set up our content window so we're going to go ahead and say let content view for my content view here i'm going to add one thing that's just going to be var dismiss and then this is just going to allow me to have a button here so when i click on this button it's going to dismiss my view and so if i were to add inside of here maybe maybe like a button we have a label we have the image with the system name of x mark like so, then we can go ahead and say self dot uh, dismiss. So this is going to be dismissing as soon as we hit that. And then now when we hit the X mark, we're gonna say self dot close. And so this is going to be closing our panel when we hit the X mark inside of our content view. Next up, we need to say NS hosting view that is only available in Swift UI. So you can say import Swift UI like so. Uh, but this is just going to allow you to host a Swift UI view inside of an app kit view. Then we say self.content view will be equal to our hosting view. The hosting view, we're gonna set that to the frame of our hosting view dot fitting size. So this is meaning that we're actually gonna take our content view and get the size of this and gonna, we're gonna use that to uh, figure out where this should be placed on our screen. We're then going to get our screen. We're gonna get our screen size effectively here. And we're also going to determine some of the padding. So we don't want it within 
you know, X amount of points or pixels away from the edge. So we're gonna make it so it's 20 points away from the edge. Then we're gonna say let screen frame equal to screen dot visible frame here. We're gonna grab the X position. Uh, this is going to be our screen frame dot max X. So we're gonna push it all the way to the right. Uh, then our hosting view dot frame dot width minus our padding. So then we're gonna bring it back to the left a bit. And then for our Y position, we're just gonna say screen frame dot min Y plus padding. So we're gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom and bring it up ever so slightly. We're then gonna take those X positions and Y positions, set that as our frame origin and set our content size. And now going back to our initializer, we wanna say set up window and set up content view like so. So now that we have our content panel all built out, let's go ahead and go back over to our app delegate. Now inside of here, we need a place that stores the content window that we are creating here. So we're gonna save our content window, colon NS window. This is gonna be an optional. And then let's just fill in our show content panel or our show content window function like so. So what this is going to do is it's going to first, if we have anything open, it's gonna go through the windows, check if we have a content window. If we do, we're gonna close that previous window and set it to nil. Then we can go ahead and say, let content panel equal content panel. We're gonna create that, set that as our content window. And then we're gonna say content panel dot make key and order front passing along nil. And then we're gonna say make key. And so this is gonna make the view or whatever we show the key one that is shown to the users. And so if we wanted this to work, we can just go ahead and say show content window as soon as we build. Uh, but first, before we actually do that, we need to go back over to our uh, tutorial app here and we need a place that initializes our app delegate. So I'm just gonna say at NS application delegate adapter app delegate dot self var app delegate and we should be able to build and run this. And it's now going to initialize our app delegate and therefore add, as you can see right down here, that content view that we created. And you can see that it is floating above everything. Now, if you wanna make this more visible, you can go ahead and say dot background will be equal to color dot white. We'll set our foreground style as color dot black. And then we'll go ahead and say dot frame uh, width height. Let's maybe make it a hundred by uh, 500 with the alignment of center or something along those lines. And you should be able to see that as you edit this content view, it should edit that. Now you'll notice that the background is off because I put the frame after the background, but that should fix it. And so now as we build, there is our view. Uh, and you can click, drag, and move it around as you please. Now the other part that's really cool about what OpenAI did is it's this simple, you know, hotkey. It's just option space and you get it on there uh, immediately. And it's globally accessible. You don't need to be looking at the app or anything. So I was curious how they did this. And one of the uh, packages that I looked into is called hotkey. So if we import the package hotkey, I'll leave it in the description down below. Uh, let's just go ahead and add that, add that to our uh, tutorial package here. We can then go back over to our app delegate and set up our hotkey. So first off, we need to go ahead and import hotkey, like so. We're gonna say var hotkey, colon hotkey is going to be an optional like so. And then we'll have a function saying set up hotkey. So for this, we have hotkey, we have the key that we want to be accessible. So I'm just going to be using A, and it has to be working with the modifiers of command and shift. If you only want this to be command A or whatever, uh, you can work with it that way as well. However, for our cases, command shift A. And then once that key is clicked, you're gonna go ahead and handle that here. Uh, we're gonna say dispatch q.main.async show content window, and it's going to show the content window. So now we could go ahead and say set up hotkey, build and run this, and we should be able to say command shift A, and it should show our window in the bottom right hand corner like so. Now I have two right now, but that's because there was a previous instance, but you get the idea. But there you have it. That's how you create like a floating panel that's globally accessible uh, using macOS, NS panel and all that. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.